you doing? Good, how are you? I think you have non-functioning pituitary adenoma. They are not cancerous, but they put a pressure on pituitary, which makes you prolactin. Mm -hmm. That prolactin goes up and it pretends that you're pregnant. And that's the reason why you cannot get pregnant. Mm -hmm. Uh, the only one way to fix it, honestly, is a surgery. I understand you take cabergoline. I would have to go up to make prolactin normal, but I don't think it's going to do anything to the size of the tumor. Pituitary makes you other hormones, which uh, give you ovulation, right? And give you female hormone production, right? Mm -hmm. It makes you something called LHFSH. Okay. And it's a very vulnerable tissue. So whenever you have a surgery, it has to be done by somebody good. I know it sounds scary, all right? And it's done by brain surgeon through your nose, okay. right? So everything will be taken care of. I don't know how much you read about it, but we got it. And then, you know, you have a follow-up six months, right? Okay. And you may get pregnant by then. Okay. So it's not that you have a contraindication to get pregnant. They want to make sure that your pituitary is totally functioning. Right. right? Look at the picture, it looks scary, right? But right. Because pituitary is the size of the thumb, right? It's not very big, right? And then you have a tumor around it, but that tumor did not get to the optic chiasm, which is, it's the nerve crossing of optic nerve, right? Okay. And, and the way it, the tumor grows pushes the optic chiasm and you don't see the corner of your eye. So I'm going to send him an email and you're going to get the message. They will pick you in probably very quickly. Probably within a week, two weeks. Very nice to meet you and then um, keep me posted, okay? Okay, well, thank you so much. Right. Nice to meet you. Bye. Bye. Bye, Matana. Bye. It's hard to hear like hearing what she said is she's great energy and yeah. a lot of trust very on top of everything you know you're in good hands you've been this far you've gone this far yeah and now it's just that peak of the hill and then you're down yeah so, like all your answers everything was just answered like everything was just answered so like you want to be happy because you're like right there and then like I'm just like scared. Yeah. Give mama a kissy, come on. <laughs> Go. Ready? What's, What's going, going on, Murphy? Welcome back to our channel, guys. If you're new, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit that button, button turn on post notifications, and join <laughs> the family. You're in the room. Why are you just saying <laughs> This is like her like nervous, uh, shy <laughs> laugh that she's doing that she's like, it's like our way we do this laugh of anxiousness. Yeah, and just getting through it. Yeah. Most of you already know, and if you don't already know, we have a few videos of me talking about like my whole story. I do have a pituitary tumor. It's called a prolactinoma or a macroadenoma. It has been affecting me for a really long time, honestly going on like two years. And I want to say it's been dragged out for this long because I was scared of it and I was running from it. Obviously when you don't have ever any health issues and then a doctor tells you that you have a tumor, your mind goes crazy and you're thinking of a million different things and a million things that could go wrong and I was scared of it for a really really long time. Your pituitary gland is like right behind your nose and your pituitary gland is literally in control of all of your hormones and for me I haven't had a natural period in like going on eight years. I was on birth control since I think I was around like 15-ish. Basically what I have with like the prolactinoma is most of the time caused by birth control. Obviously me being young and not knowing what I know now, I didn't know 
by just taking birth control was going to put me in the position that I am today. And then on top of other things that I've done, like my breast implants, which I think in my body's case, everything that is just foreign to my body, my body rejects it. My body does not like it. The last update I feel like I gave you guys was my tumor was sitting at 14 millimeters. That was a little bit over a year ago. At that point, I got on medication. I was on cabergoline. My body was not liking it so over time i just i found myself feeling very different and very sick and every time that i would take it i would i would feel like down and out for like multiple days after like six months of me taking it regularly how i'm supposed to be taking my medication that's during the time that i got my period for like the first time ever it helped my period it helped all my levels all of that but obviously at one point i was like this i already know this medication is making me feel so sick i was like it felt like my symptoms were almost heightening in a way because it was also creating other symptoms and i just didn't feel like myself and so i myself just kind of backed down from some medication and i was kind of more like on and off with it that's when my period stopped and obviously, since I wasn't taking it regularly, it was just not doing what it was supposed to. It was kind of like a lose-lose because it's like if I don't take it, then obviously all my levels are going to be bad and my tumor is going to continue to grow. But if I do take it, I'm going to be sick, but it's going to help my tumor shrink. So it was... It was just kind of like a lose-lose in my opinion. Fast forward to last month, I got all new doctors here and that was kind of something I was struggling with for a really long time. I got my MRI, I did new labs of all my levels and all of that and my levels were definitely not as high as they were a long time ago, but they were still just not at normal ranges just to like give you guys a little bit of a reference and like how i feel and because my levels aren't normal these are the effects that i have from it so obviously like my body is producing more prolactin which is like something that you need for like when you're pregnant so i can't get pregnant right now because my body already thinks that it's pregnant and all with my, all my other hormones, I have weight gain, acne. Um, your nipple. Yeah, at one point when my prolactin levels were really high, I was ha having nipple discharge. But ever since I got on the medication, that's gone away, which is a really good thing. But I have really bad like dizzy spells. My vision goes kind of like in and out sometimes. Um, I have double vision. Sometimes like lack of balance in... Yeah, that's kind of gotten bad at times where I just, my body will feel like it's just like shutting down and I'll literally just like feel like I'm falling in Ryan's arms or I need to like lay down. Or I've just been feeling really sick for a really long time and after going over my new scans with my specialist, I see an endocrinologist for all like my labs and all of that. She was telling me that I should go see a neurosurgeon and luckily she recommended me a really 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 good doctor obviously you guys know that we live in miami and he's based at the university of miami i guess one of the best that specialize in pituitary so he does multiple of these surgeries a week so i did have a appointment with this neurosurgeon it's kind of scary to think about because they were telling me that basically when you look at it the size of my tumor is like the size of my actual pituitary gland so looking at it it looks scary it's sitting right like basically touching my optical nerve which is why it's causing me kind of like vision issues but if it grows any more than that he was saying that i could blind or my peripheral vision could basically become black my double vision could get worse so obviously if cabergoline isn't treating me the best i'm not going to want to take it and if i don't want to take that it's only going to create more symptoms for me but also make the tumor grow this is the part where i was talking to him and you guys know that having a big family is really important to me i kind of have been set on this for a little while now just kind of internally 
even before going into any of these appointments that I wanted to get this tumor removed. I feel like longevity wise, I want a big family and it's honestly just not possible for me to get pregnant while having this tumor in. And I just don't want to be dealing with this for the rest of my life because basically the conversations that I was having with them is I'm either A, going to have to be on medication for the rest of my life to treat this tumor, to keep it in control. It makes me sick. It doesn't make me feel good. It creates other symptoms for me. And I'm just in like a nasty cycle and mentally, obviously physically it's hard, but mentally it's so draining. And I feel like I've become so numb to life. And I feel like that's something that I haven't been transparent about like with you guys, because it's like you guys and what we do and like Ryan, all that stuff makes me really happy. But at the end of the day, I'm missing like this spark and this like glow from life that I feel like this health situation has stripped from me. I just feel like my only option was to remove it. And I do feel really confident. And it just felt like the light, like we were seeing the light at the end of this like long dark tunnel that I kept running from and I kept asking like why do I have to deal with this like why like blah 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 but you guys haven't even seen like the darkest of this tunnel that it's gotten to and just like me being her partner and seeing how down she's been and seeing that she's not at 110% that she should be in and that because she's a light when she came into my life she was she's a light and she's a light on so many people. Like even you guys, when we see you guys in public or like we see our friends, like she's such a bright light. And recently, like the past few years, like she's been that bright light, but like she could be shining way more. And seeing her down and seeing this dark side kind of take over, it's like, it's just sad to see, of, especially being together for going on eight years now. She actually came to me I forgot what we were doing, but it was so random. She just came to me. She was like, yeah, I decided that I'm having surgery. She just decided that on her own. It just surely shows her strength. And that's what I, I admire about her and I love about her is, is she shows her independence. Even though we have each other, she does have her independence. And it's like so strong and admiring. And I just want to point that out because like we've, we've gone through it with this. Like, let alone all of the symptoms that she's feeling, that's one thing. Then on top of it, the support system that she has is very minimal. We have, she has me, she has some of her friends, and then she has you guys. But this whole, this type of process, you know, she doesn't have no like grown ups, like nobody telling her what to do, like telling her how she should do things and, and, and having that guidance. She doesn't have that. She's making these decisions for herself that beats on somebody that beats on you when you don't have that another thing is like we have put our life on social media and we and we love doing it we love taking you guys because a lot of people have dm'd her and said they have the same thing when they got it taken out they felt a million times better mm -hmm. there's people that go through much even worse things but seeing our videos just puts a smile on your face and it makes you feel like there is good to come for you and, and that's what we love you know and then there's a side of things where you know we put this out on the internet and we got called faking it and that she doesn't have a tumor, she faked the whole, like she's literally not able to get pregnant and people will say stuff like, I'm disappointed that you guys haven't had a kid and, and things like for that to see that type of stuff, like that beats at you and beats at you and beats at you. We don't ever show anything like that. And like we don't show nothing towards it that, that you give off negative, we're gonna give you back positive. These are like some of the things that on top of it that we've been going through, that we've been, that we've been dealing with that we just haven't shown or said. The tunnel's gotten dark. Yeah. It's gotten dark. And I think our mindsets and our faith is what has kept the brightness there. I was really just about to say that. That guidance is what we're following. Mm -hmm. This is the path that, that she has to take to get yeah. healthy. Not I do think that in some cases of like what I have and there's many women out there that are on cabergoling that do get pregnant and it works for them. But I just think in my case, it just is not the case. It took us this long to just accept and realize that honestly, I feel like 
like kind of what Ryan was saying, I feel like a lot of my strength has come from my faith in God and the path and the signs that he has truly been showing us. And I don't want to go into all of that, but he's been so real and so present in our life. And I just feel like out of all things, like that strength has really been through him. Actually, when you guys see this next week is my surgery. Five days, four days from you guys seeing this, we're actually going to the hospital because she's gonna be there for three nights. Monday night, we'll be heading to the hospital. Mm -hmm. They're gonna do all the pre-op stuff. Yeah. Um, and then, because it has to do with her head, it, her, it has to do with the stem of her brain. Like, it's it's technically not a brain tumor, but it's a part of the brain. So I don't I don't get how it's, it has to do with the head. Yeah. And this is a big surgery because like they have to go into her head. So there's a lot of obviously nerves and nerves nervousness going into it. Yeah, but they don't have to like shave my head or do anything. They are actually going through my nose. Yeah, so, so so pretty much the surgery is gonna be hurt is gonna be going through her nose and there's like a bone that they have to kind of at the base of like break it a little bit and then get through it and then they'll scoop the ice cream out and and then clear it out. But and then she'll get fixed up. Um mm -hmm. so that, yeah, that is a good thing that they get to go through her nose. They don't have to like um do it from the outside, but she'll go into the hospital on Monday night. They'll do like all the pre-op. She's yeah. gonna be there for three nights. They'll do the surgery Tuesday. Um, not too sure how long that's gonna be for. Yeah. But then she's in recovery and they gotta watch over her since it's a head surgery. Like they gotta watch over her. For like fluid, but also something, I don't know too much. I'll be able to like update you guys on what exactly it's called, but something to do with my urination. <laughs> Something to do with all, all of that. I don't really know what it's for. Honestly, I feel like it's weird, but I feel like I have an actual like process. I'm gonna have like a sense of like a like an anxiety rush, like when I have to go into my hospital bed that I'm gonna be in for the next like four days. I mean, I think we do try and not say things to to scare us. Yeah. Um, but to let like being straightforward like it's there it's definitely there in inside of us but we yeah we try not to show it um yeah but i also feel like it's because we're trying to be as positive as yeah. as possible it's all up from here how she's feeling everything is all up from here you're gonna be feeling a million times better mm. but i want to leave off on this is We've been seeing the angel numbers 9-11 a lot. And that meaning is like a restart's coming. Um, and she's been just gradually declining in her health and how she feels. And her symptoms, just everything has just been like heightened. Now her surgery's here. And it's just literally going to be a... It's not even going to be here. It's going to be a complete restart. Yeah. And then you're going to be up. So it's like knowing that is like more relieving when you think about it like that yeah so surgery mm -hmm. five days thank you guys so much for all the love and support you guys have been showing me with this and i know that you guys have probably had so many questions or wondering how i'm doing and a lot of you do check on me and i just want to say thank you for that because you know i don't have a lot of people in my life that check on me and check on how i'm doing so thank you guys for being some of the few people that do do that. I'm gonna be good, we're gonna be updating you guys, but this is like a new chapter, a new beginning. I'm proud of myself that I'm taking this step. So, we love you guys, and we'll see you when surgery comes. Mark, mark out. Peace. Peace.